Hello and welcome to Scleroderma Sunshine, a podcast to help brighten the lives of those affected and to help raise some much needed awareness of this terrible disease. From everyday warriors to doctors and specialists, you will find inspiration, hope, support, sunshine and more. Come and join me on this journey and together we can let our light shine bright. I'm your host, Tim Primavera. Welcome to a brighter day. So, welcome back to Scleroderma Sunshine. Uh, today we have Claire from LV Chair Yoga Australia. It's great to have you here, Claire. Um, Claire's been in the fitness industry for 20 years and uh, she has a Bachelor of Sport and Science and a qualified yoga therapist and more. Um, yeah, so why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself, Claire? Yeah, thank you for having me on the podcast. It's really nice to be here. And um, yeah, I, I'm from Sydney, Australia, and I work now mostly as a chair yoga teacher and also a yoga therapist. And I also teach Zumba as well as my little alter ego side job. And um, yeah, I started back in the 90s doing aerobics, you know, uh, all the mambo, cha-cha, spin, grapevines, all of that stuff, uh, which I really love the creativity of. And from there, I ended up working a bit more with seniors <laughs> as I got into my career and through Zumba, especially teaching them Zumba Gold. And that's funny enough how I ended up coming um, to chair yoga was actually through Zumba Gold <laughs> because one day I was teaching my class and I just um, gave them three breaths at the end. I don't even really know why we did it, but it just happened and everyone just went oh, at the end. And I just had one of those moments where I thought I just need to teach yoga for these people. But, uh, you know, I wasn't a yoga teacher yet because I had been teaching high impact classes for long, long time, maybe 10 years or more before that and um, had quite a few injuries and taught on injuries and my body. I thought in myself that I wasn't flexible enough or good enough or I wouldn't be able to do the training because I wasn't, you know, um, suitable for being a yoga teacher. Um, but then I ended up thinking I've got to do something for these people. So I ended up looking online for a yoga for seniors or something like that, that I could do with them. And I ended up finding chair yoga um, course in New York, because there wasn't really anything in Australia at that point. And I thought, well, I love New York, so I'm going to go. <laughs> so off I went. I'm just that kind of person too, where I would just, um, you know, take take advantage of the opportunities if they're there to experience both travel, um, expand my mind in in learning as well. So uh, so I did that, and it was just the best thing I've done. Obviously, it's led me to where I am, but also just to understand that um, yoga isn't all about striking a pose and, <laughs> and being really flexible, and uh, you don't have to you know be perfect to be or be be a certain type of being to be a yoga teacher or a participant and so it kind of gave me um permission within myself to both practice yoga as myself and also teach yoga so when I came back from that I started teaching chair yoga to my seniors and then I also suddenly got a call from a yoga studio uh, just where I had been going once a week or whatever and he's like you should it's starting this week you should do it and so I ended up just doing it and it was actually a really great training and actually through my challenges that I had in my body I um, I could actually help the other students there to learn and understand about different needs in classes and to kind of be that example for them, you know, to be able to help more pe people in their classes who may have had, you know, a back injury or tight body or whatever. So, so maybe in a way it was a, all those um, challenges were a bit of a gift. Uh, and if you can look at them like that, well, that's that's a beautiful thing, right? <laughs> so all of our challenges help us to understand more about others and, and teach others as well. So yeah, definitely um our 
experiences a week have in life or even from you doing it yourself and going to New York from the training, uh, you can then obviously use that to give back to the other people and and help them with their experiences too. Um, and I guess there's probably a lot of, like you said, there's a lot of myths and stuff around yoga about what it is. Um, it's not just, yeah, like you said, not just striking a pose and, and sort of becoming one of those people that have got like a really cut body and like super fit like it's i'm sure it's got a lot of other benefits as well from from the mindfulness and the, and the stretching and things like that as well yeah it definitely goes way beyond just poses i mean that's just one one aspect and and, and um classes that focus on poses aren't necessarily bad because they're offering people a pathway into yoga like for example someone i, I mean i taught in gyms for a uh, yoga in the gym for a while and um many people came looking for fitness or looking for a stretch that's, that's what you hear um but you know eventually those something happens because the poses are designed to be like medicine in a way so there's an energetic effect and there's an emotional effect and a mental effect so they start inquiring a little bit more about what is this yoga thing you know like and delving in deeper and you know people used to come to my yin class in that um in that gym and we used to um end up doing a lot of healing work actually and, they, and a lot of them would come just for a stretch because it's yin and they think they're just coming to have a long stretch um, on the floor you know but there's hidden uh work that's going on there and you know I was kind of um working to heal trauma and to to do that through those classes as well um and people would often cry and release a lot of things and and you know it was a really really special experience which probably they didn't expect to get at a gym you know but they're like wow what's happening i came for a stretch and now <laughs> look at me i'm crying but uh That's right. it's It'd, um be so rewarding very... for yourself too um just having that sort of feedback and that emotional response from people that have um come for maybe a stretch or had another idea of what they might be getting and then they've just got so much more out of it yeah because we like for me as a, I mean I've been a teacher for a long time but I also have a desire to help people heal especially through yoga and um, I mean I can't do that healing for them they they have to do it themselves but I can offer them some tools and everything and so this is that that class in particular especially but any yoga really um, you can you can kind of uh, help people towards their own healing and it works on many levels it's not just about I think that's why yoga is so special because um, it doesn't just look at the physical body like what western medicine does or the mental body like psychology or whatever it it's they they're making that separate from the whole being whereas like whatever happens in your physical body or your mental state uh is probably related to an emotional thing or an energetic block or um something with your breathing because it's all intertwined and whatever happens with one affects all of the system and so i think that in that way yoga can really offer like a, a way of really true healing not just band-aiding solutions and covering them up and you know um not saying that there's not a place for those things but i think they can work together you know and it looks a bit more at the whole picture rather than just one part of it definitely it's yeah. um it's almost like a in a way like a sort of like meditation as well like um when you i guess and correct me if i'm wrong but like um doing the yoga sort of helps focus your attention and your awareness on your body so that you can sort of calm the mind and sort of just detach from the outside world a little bit so you can do some of that self-healing and that's the point of the as asanas the poses really is that pathway to stillness, to enlightenment, to finding your light within. And the way to do that is through the meditation and through detaching from the external distractions. And when we connect with our body, I mean, most people, um, you know, in our society are, um, we're, well, we're all physical beings here on earth, right? So, I mean, like, we have a probably easier access to connecting with our body than say like our physical dense body than say like our energetic body because we've just had more experience with that we understand it more we can see it we can use those earthly senses that we have you know to access it whereas like 
um but but like once we get people to access their body then they can they start to feel things if they get I mean if they have enough time and space in the classes some classes are very fast and and all about exercise and you don't really get time for that but if if they're allowed to feel and experience and and do it in a way that doesn't make them feel stressed out or that they're not good enough or any of that stuff um they start to be able to access all those deeper levels of themselves and really come to much more understanding of who they are and what's causing things in their life or their injuries or whatever and and yeah again strip away those layers and start to really heal that root cause of whatever it is yeah, that's but um, the goal is to get to that place where you can be in stillness and sit really you know sit in stillness that's that's the goal because all those answers are within so yeah definitely no, that's fantastic um and do you find there's particular type of people that um, are attracted to um, to yourself for the chair yoga or it, it's for anyone or do you get basically all different types of people? Yeah, it's for everyone. And that is something that I really love about it. Um, you know, a lot of people think that chair yoga is just for seniors, but <laughs> that is one um, big aspect and big, big um, group of people that are attracted to chair yoga. Um, but think about people who sit at an office desk, um, who are at school, think about when you're on the train or the bus, wherever you are, right, you can do it because there's, there's no need to get up and change. There's no need to get a mat. There's none of that stuff. And it's accessible to everyone because everyone basically can sit in a chair or even if they're in a bed, you can adapt the things that we're teaching to be done in the bed you know so it, it really becomes accessible for everyone and nobody then misses out on all those beautiful benefits so we've just been talking about um everybody has access to to finding that pathway to themselves in a way so yeah but um i i just recently did a chair yoga video with the abc actually and it was focused on corporate people and i was so excited because like they actually approached me and it was you know, um, just so great to see that people are recognizing that this need for moving more, first of all, during the day is the way to health because, you know, the classes we do before, after lunchtime don't really, well, according to research, don't really help us to prolong our life or reduce those long term uh, illnesses and things where uh, caused by too much sitting um, whereas like that movement during the day is the key really so that's really great they recognize that and also not just that but the mental health be benefits of that and um, improving productivity finding that calm in that day and that was really the goal of showing what we were showing so so yeah I thought that was amazing that they reached out to me with that idea in mind so that's saying something about the reach that um that yoga is having i think and the effect that it's, that it's having because it's gaining popularity and everything so yeah that's yeah, um, yeah I, um from from experience myself um office type um situations where you're sitting down in a chair all day i know myself um i've always been in a quiet outdoor physical type job and for a short period of time i was in an office uh, doing some paperwork and things and and just being sitting down in the chair for such long periods all day, I ended up with um, like sciatica problems um, and I obviously didn't do yoga. I had to find other other means, but um, I can see the advantages of being able to just do some of those stretches and, and things at your desk um, in your chair. Because um, I think they say like you do like an hour or two and then you have like a 10 or 15 minute break. So it'd be a perfect time to do some of those stretches. Yeah, well, I think it's actually every 30 minutes that you should move okay. is the recommendation. That's probably why I had the problem. <laughs> So, but yeah, how long, I mean, I was just doing my taxes over the weekend for three whole days. I was sitting at the computer. I did have to go and teach a class and I did have to do a few things and, you know, just moving here and there, I'm sure was helpful for getting me through that because, uh, you know, mentally it's not my favorite place to be either doing things like that. Um, but also just that, the, the the compression effect in your body and then that you're looking at that screen for so long and uh just the repetitive uh, action of looking from one thing to another anything like anything you're doing for too long at a time it's really gonna end up causing imbalances and things like that you know so uh having those regular movement breaks where you move like in a different direction or you find ways to help your breathing space or you find ways to 
you know, um, lengthen the spine to get rid of some of that compression or activate, just remind your muscles to switch on again. So you sit up tall or whatever, like, yeah, it would just um, take a moment to move your eyes around the room or something. I mean, that could be yoga as well. Right. <laughs> so yeah, definitely. yeah. Yeah. It's super helpful. Um, but I've noticed, yeah, I used to be, cause I was teaching classes so much and then um, now I have my business. So I'm doing a lot more of that back end admin stuff as well. And I really noticed the difference in my body and I'm always so grateful for um, the chair yoga, you know, just the, the knowledge of that and to be able to use that during my day as well to help. Yeah, Definitely. Yeah. And um, your experiences with um, having some of that admin, admin stuff too, you can probably, I guess, find new things that you can probably help teach other people that are doing, doing those things too. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And taking care of ourselves is super important, right? We only have one body for this life. So let's 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 uh, honor it and respect it and and doing these kind of practices really kind of help us remember about doing that as well. So yeah, That's definitely. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um so I'm obviously a big advocate for raising awareness for scleroderma and um like autoimmune conditions that um overlap and things like that um have you had many people with um autoimmune conditions that might have um like some of the people with scleroderma they have lack of flexibility due to tight skin and things like that um have you had much experience with um clients with those sort of conditions yeah i mean uh there's so many different challenges we call them challenges instead of um problems or anything because challenges can always be overcome and it takes the the negative um energy out of the word so we like to say challenges um so there's many people who have many different challenges that come to our classes and or to chair yoga um and with uh we've had nia who i think you know as well who actually ended up um, finding our class find my class i think on facebook and then um signing up for our teacher training so um you know we don't turn away anyone it doesn't matter what condition or challenge that you have because the thing is that the way that we teach chair yoga is by providing options for every body it doesn't matter who you are or what challenges you have, you can do it because we have a way of practicing every single shape for you, you know? And so like even um, someone who may just like, uh, for example, may only be able to move their fingers, you know, to do say a triangle pose, like moving one finger up and one finger out, that might be their triangle pose, but just doing that could set off a pattern you know, that helps improve their movement and, and maybe that will expand into their hands, their arms, their other parts of their body. So, and that has happened before. So, uh, you know, but the key is to really just start where you're at because, and to, to be able and um, to kind of ex, uh, accept where you're at and go from there and know that that changes every day and that there's no need to be anything other than what you are right like because that's what I was saying about needing to be perfect or whatever that doesn't matter because you already are perfect wherever you are for starters but you know anything you do is going to be beneficial for you so um, if one person is doing something one way and another person's doing something another way it would make complete sense because they're two unique individuals who have different bodies mind spirits so they're going to need different things so being able to offer those options um which we call uh levels of flexibility i don't know about that term but uh, <laughs> critical options um uh, but they are basically giving people a chance to just practice in their own way so we can have everyone in the class which is amazing and everyone can be there at the same time that way too nobody's left out nobody's feeling like oh, i can't go to that class because those people won't understand or um they won't accept me or whatever like you know everybody can be there at the same time regardless of what their challenges are definitely it sounds like it's um like it's such an inclusive community too um and like you said like it's all those those little little things like you might start with with the fingers but sometimes the the um repetition of all those little small things can can turn into larger things like that might help stimulate the mind and and like yeah just sort of amplify from there into into other bigger and 
better things like little, the the little wins that they get for the for themselves. Um, but yeah, the, just having that supportive community where no one's left out is such an and important thing. Also, like um, the the community or oh, like my classes are just testament to like that embracing community and um, welcoming everyone and all of that. Um, but also it's about having choice as well and having that power given back to you to be able to do it in the way that you need on that day without somebody saying that's wrong, um, you can't do it like that, it's got to look like this because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what it looks like. It matters like what's the benefit? What are you trying to achieve? You know, that's way more important than what something might look like or, um, or you know, if it's right or wrong. I don't even believe there could be a right or wrong because we are so unique and individual. So right or wrong doesn't really exist, right? <laughs> it's like the only wrong place to be really is the one that, that is, is not right for you, <laughs> if that makes sense. So, that's right. So, you know, and we really treat, teach that in our training and we really um, try to um, encourage our students um, to take back their power and to take back their control of their life and to, and to choose for themselves. And if we can do that in our yoga class, then maybe we can start to take that out into our daily life and have more power and feel our, you know, because often in life we're, told we've got to do this we've got to do that and yes there are some general things we should probably adhere to for our own safety but um but at the same time like we give our power away to other people and so and a lot of the time people who come with some kind of challenges like this um or who have maybe a disability or who are even seniors or anyone really I mean it's not even just um, in those communities, it's actually probably a societal thing. Um, they feel as though they don't have control over their life or they're being or they don't have their power. So being able to give that back to them during the class is really, really important, I believe, in the work that we're doing because um, that can travel out into their daily lives and help them feel more empowered and more in control. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's good that it's flexible too, because I know like there's a lot of um, like say martial arts, for example, like everything's like done a specific way and there's not really any um, give or take in it to an extent. Like, so that's how, that's how it happens. Yeah. That's how you need to do it. So a lot of people can't do it or they feel left out because they do different things. So it's, it's good that you, there's all those different levels of inclusion and the way they can can cooperate and they can basically just tailor it to themselves um, but i guess the main thing is that they that they're taking a step to do it no matter how big or small it is exactly even if they just come and <coughs> sit there like you know that's that's yoga if they're breathing <laughs> you know what i mean like it's not it's not all about the poses as we mentioned but i think the thing is there are a lot of yoga uh, teach teachings that were created by by somebody and um, follow a strict protocol like that, like martial arts, for example. And um, the issue is with that, that there are some good teachings in those. I'm not going to say that, you know, one school of thought is better than another because everyone has their own and people are drawn to that for a particular reason. Um, and maybe it's what they need at that time or whatever. Um, but the problem is that they're, they're so scripted and so like designed that how can they possibly work? Because it's kind of like one size fits all for a group of complete individuals. Like it just, um, it doesn't work really, uh, you know, to, yeah. And a lot of people end up getting injured from that because they're forcing themselves into these shapes. Whereas maybe, maybe it's their bone structure, like that will never change, right? If someone has a hip bone that curls more over, a hip socket that curls more over the bone, they're not going to be able to move their bone as much as someone who has a, quite an open socket, for example. But if you're constantly pushing or pulling something into that position, that's just going to cause long-term damage. And that does happen a lot with uh, practices like Ashtanga, for example, where there are many, many, many hip replacements, but people... They don't believe it until it happens to them. <laughs> so so we right. try to back to the point of yoga being for healing, not for hurting. <laughs> so um, um, it made me think of um, 
well, some of the other things are like playing a game of Twister. Like it's it's good for the short term, but definitely not for the long term. You can't maintain some of those. Imagine positions. you were doing that. Yeah, imagine you were doing that every day as like a as a practice. I mean, that the kind of is what it feels like sometimes twisting mm. yourself into all those crazy positions. And yeah, I mean, there's definitely um, a place for you know discipline and repetition and all of that stuff is important uh, to some regard too. So. Um, they like I said they they have a place for certain maybe for certain time periods or for certain people that need it or whatever but it's not for everybody and it's not all the time so I think that you have to be flexible like a yogi not just in your body but in but in uh the way that you practice even because you're going to wake up every day different and especially if you have um any challenges like autoimmune I mean day to day it can just minute to minute can be different so um you you have to go with how you are in that moment and practice from there so definitely yeah. um so something i was curious about before i did a bit of research so the lv part of chair yoga so i had to do a bit of research and i found out that it's um to do with the the founder of um chair yoga um lakshmi volka i think your name is um, yeah. <laughs> so do you know a bit of the backstory behind that yeah, so she actually, everybody asks that question, who's LV? <laughs> um, so Lakshmi Volker is the creator of chair yoga. So she actually came up with um, chair yoga as a practice back in 1983, two, two or three. And um, it was to do with... Uh, one of her students in her classes who had rheumatoid arthritis and couldn't get up and down off the floor. She was just in her thirties and um, couldn't practice mat yoga anymore. So she was kind of um, trying to figure out a way to help her. And after a lot of meditation and eventually she was sitting on the couch with her cats wandering around <laughs> patting the cats and figured out, wait a minute, I'm doing a twist. Oh, I'm doing something else. Um, so she kind of came up with that idea of doing yoga on the chair and um that's how it was born so uh, there is like Iyengar for example use yoga chairs as a prop but that's a bit different to what we teach which is a whole class seated on the chair whereas like that that they're using that to enhance their mat poses in a way um so or to um, aid in not enhance all the time but maybe support the mat poses uh, so it's a little bit different to what we what she came up with so uh chair yoga is um yeah it's it's a little different to just using yoga as a, a chair as the prop so uh so that's how that was born and then she ended up meeting her partner bruce online on a dating site in the 90s and um of course <laughs> she's such a um go-getter and manifester she manifested him she says so uh so they met there and he was quite computer savvy and business minded more than her so that became kind of the business then and um he they also realized you know that need to get this out to more people than just her classes that she was teaching but to share this with more people they would need to do teacher trainings and that's how that kind of came about and um yeah, that was that was in the '90s, and from there, it's been mostly in the US um, for all that time until uh, I guess I came along, and <laughs> another person in the UK came along, and now it's expanded out worldwide. Well, they always had an online version where they um, taught some people from around the world, but now we have many more trainings, you know, in uh, Australia and different countries as well. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Sometimes she they, was um, just about to retire, but went the other way. <laughs> so you never know what life is going to bring. <laughs> look at look at the impact she's making now. Um, but yeah, it's like some of the sometimes the unexpected things in life turn into such blessings. Yeah, well, I wasn't expecting to end up being the teacher trainer. I was like asking them to come over and do the training. So you know, um, and yeah, I'm so glad that happened because it's just one of my favorite things to share the program with um, people and get out and meet so many other like-minded teachers because everyone that comes to our training 
I've never really met anyone that doesn't have a beautiful heart. Like, I mean, everyone has a beautiful heart anyway, but like, <laughs> you know, uh, everyone has the best intentions of helping people. And I think it's because most people that come to our trainings have had experiences or they know someone who has an experience that needs chair yoga. So it's um, again, coming back to that learning from, from having those challenges and to being able to then take those and help others with what, what's happened to you or with wherever you're at and uh so everybody's had different different experiences in their life and in that way it's not just about me teaching them chair yoga but it becomes like this collaborative uh experience where we're all learning and sharing and growing from each other's experiences so uh it's pretty it's pretty awesome being in those trainings because I always learn so much from my my students that come and and yeah, it, it's amazing experience. So, um, yeah, sometimes, sometimes you become the student. I think you always are the student. Like, I think mm. even in your classes with people coming to your classes, like, you, um, you know, your weekly classes or whatever, I think even like anything that I can teach people in our training is not going to be the same as what they get in that real life experience because they tell they will show up with something you need to think on the spot and become very creative you know but the key is to have like all those tools and techniques and the learnings in your toolbox and then when that person presents there for you um, with the challenge that you've never seen before or whatever you've got something there you can you can pull out of the toolbox to help them with you know so uh so yeah, just I always tell everyone to keep collecting as many tools as you can. And that way, whoever is with you will be able to get the best help that they can get because you you have something for everyone there. Yeah. So definitely. I don't know if that's yeah. just my Gemini like loving to come out and and um <laughs> and do like a million things at once. No, but I think, uh, we, think yeah. we all do that. <laughs> yeah. We all want to help as many people as we can. We sort of I guess we spread ourselves too thin sometimes, but it's for the best intentions. So I guess. Oh, definitely, knows. definitely. But I think that um, if you have all those tools, again, like I said, like even our manual, we don't just focus on chair yoga. We do have, you know, that there as a main kind of part of the body of the manual but but we also have some other things like reflexology or like um uh, self-massage some different breathing techniques meditations all of that type of stuff that can if someone comes in that's not really connecting with the poses or that's not right for them today uh there's other things to fall back on even within our our training itself but then you've got other modalities as well that you can expand out into so um, but yeah, that having, having different, not being stuck on just that one size fits all thing is so important, right? Because, um, if you have that, how would you help that person? And they do come in with a different challenge that you, and actually that's what happens when you were saying before about being left out or being, um, like just ignored or whatever that happens a lot to people in classes and it's not really on purpose by the teachers I think they have good intentions they just don't have an understanding of what to do or learning or it's, um, they've never done a training so they don't get it you know what I mean and then that person will just probably never go back to yoga again which is really sad mm. um and I've seen that happen and I've felt that myself a few times through throughout my own yoga practice practices before I learned more about about it for myself uh, teachers would just kind of look at me and walk away because they didn't know what to do and uh yeah and it didn't make me feel very comfortable in the class for sure so so the more tools you can collect as a teacher I think that expands you so much and also those little things that the, the students teach you that when they give you their feedback you know that I mean, we've got to always be watching, we've got to be observing, we've got to be taking it in and react and um, learning from everything that's coming coming to us. If we do something and we see someone's face go red, well, we've got to take notice of that because uh, that that must not be right for that person. So what else can we do for them? How can we help that? Uh, instead of just needing to follow that script so tightly, can we have a moment to to really let that person breeze or like whatever they need you know so that's yeah. right and um this plan but then adaptability is the key <laughs> that's right being flexible and learning along the way and um that one person's um challenge 
there might be quite a lot of people that are going through the same challenge so it can yeah, help a lot more people yeah definitely definitely and like not making them feel like um that they're being annoying a lot of people say oh, I don't want to be annoying <laughs> but but they're definitely not because they're probably helping other people as well by by saying so again it's like giving people back their power because if that doesn't and allowing them a space where they feel comfortable enough to say wait a minute this doesn't feel right for me and not taking that personally as a teacher like but but that's what I planned and that's what I know and you know like which can happen because our ego will go hey <laughs> but uh but how about that we're there for them not for us for starters and like what we know is is only meant to be helping them and not harming them so if they um I mean that's just the first teaching of yoga really is the first yama is the hymns are non-harm non-violence and um if we're doing something because we're so stuck in our pride or in our in our planning <laughs> that is is harming someone we're really not practicing yoga ourselves as a teacher so um yeah so we have to just come back to what's right for our students and who are we teaching in front of us really yeah. that's and and take that always get that feedback whether it's verbal or non-verbal but but take it on as a lesson and also don't be scared to say you don't know everything <laughs> it's okay you can that's always right. go <laughs> yeah. admitting, admitting when you're wrong or you don't know it's um yeah, it's it goes goes a long way yeah definitely mm. definitely hi are you living with scleroderma are you newly diagnosed or have had it for most of your life perhaps someone you know has scleroderma or you're living with someone who does it could be your father mother sister or your brother maybe even your next door neighbour. Scleroderma doesn't discriminate and can affect many people of any age, race or gender. One thing I want you to know is you're not alone. You don't have to be alone or do this alone. There are many online support groups including Facebook closed groups and communities. There is also many national and state associations with memberships. You can also attend face-to-face -face support groups in some areas. We are living in such a connected world that technology allows us to be able to reach out to anyone at any time by almost any means possible. Don't ever be afraid to ask for help. We are all here to support each other. Now back to the show. So, uh, so I guess um, for people that want to um, maybe reach out um, what sort of products and services do you offer as as like training and, and that sort of thing I guess yeah so I have um, teacher trainings actually uh, coming up because now we can travel a bit more so um, I usually do them around Australia so we have one coming up in Brisbane this month and then uh, we've got um, Melbourne Adelaide Perth and Sydney coming up the rest of the year and we also do training in so th those ones are held over a weekend um, usually in those cities and we also do training online as well so we have a private study option which is um, self-study and then we do zoom calls so it still has a personal touch and you still get time to be with a real person and to get feedback and ask questions and all of that stuff um, and then we also have a virtual classroom as well, which is like a group uh, training face to face, but in a Zoom uh, environment. So that came about because of all the lockdowns and not being able to travel. So we, we needed to adapt uh, our trainings online and actually it'll probably stay on our schedule because it's it's great for people to join from all over the world or from uh, rural uh, rural places or places where they can't get to the training or they just miss the date or whatever for whatever reason they want to stay at home and do their training like they aren't mobile to go out and do the training but the, but at home they have more accessibility so so there's um, many reasons why people might choose all the different options but yeah so that's what we have coming up um and then in terms of classes, I'm teaching quite a few classes online um, every week, which at the moment are free to attend. So if anyone would like to come along, they're more than welcome. And um, 
we might get back to some in-person classes soon in Sydney. My, the ones that I was teaching are taking a long time to reopen again, but there is talk of it happening. So the best place to go to find all that information is my website. So um, it's getfitwhereyousit.com.au and you can look up the teacher training and the classes on there and any other events and things that are coming up as well. Cool. And your other live classes that you do, are they on Facebook or are they through your website? Yeah, so I have one Facebook Live every Tuesday at midday and um, I also have classes on Zoom as well. So there's one um, Wednesday at 10 a.m. Oh, this is Sydney time. Wednesday at 10 a.m., Thursday at 7.30 a.m. Beautiful way to wake up in the morning and, um, and Friday at 10 a.m. as well. And I also teach a slow flow mat yoga class on Friday at lunchtime as well. So, yeah, so they're the classes at the moment and um, they can register. They're all run by different organisations who I contract to, except for my Facebook Live, obviously. So they can sign up for the different classes on my website. They go to the classes page. Amazing. And I um, see you've got a DVD as well. And I believe you created that for your grandma. Did. <laughs> she did. must have been so, uh, so um, yeah, grateful for you doing that. She bought many copies to sell to her friends. <laughs> As they do. <laughs> Give to her friends, I think. Uh, but no, yes, yeah, my grandparents are so supportive of everything I do and um, big inspirations. So, uh, yes, so she was asking about or suggesting I should do that. So yeah, a couple of years ago I made a DVD and uh, it's great because uh, now people can be with me in their living rooms <laughs> anytime. It was so weird when someone said that to me the first time. <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah so definitely um you can get that on my website as well uh and anyone who's watching I can share a code with you um for a discount if you'd like as well so um maybe we can just make it up right now <laughs> like, okay. you can make it up now or I can um I can try and put it in the show notes as well so people can oh yeah put it in, in the show well. notes yeah because yeah, I'll have to set it up on my website you yeah. can edit that bit. <laughs> yeah we'll do that <laughs> yeah I'll put some links to the website and stuff in the show notes as well I'll um work something out yeah yeah awesome yeah cool um yeah so anyone who's listening if you want to get the dvd I'm happy to offer a discount and you'll be able to see the code in the show notes um underneath so amazing because uh, so yeah, I guess um not everyone or most people have social media and, and access to technology but um having the dvd will just allow to sort of separate from that and they can do that in their own time then as well yeah, and it's set, set up in a way where you can do it in three different parts or you can do it all together. So if they want um, a warming session, they can do the first warm-up section, which is about 10 minutes or so, and then there's the body of the class, you know, where it's a bit more of like a flow um, with all options for everyone, of course, so being able to choose as they go along. And then the next part is designed to be more of a cooling and calming section with a little meditation at the end. So uh, depending on how they're feeling on that day and what they need, they can break it up into different parts and they can also play it together like one whole big class as well. Nice, fantastic. Um, is there anything new that you might be working on or coming up in the future for chair yoga, something different? Um, what am I doing? I've just, well, for our teachers, we've just started a community, which is really exciting. Um, and it was something I really wanted to do for a long time and never had time. So in a way, uh, Thanks, COVID, for that. Um, so now that when people do our training, it doesn't, I mean, it never ended there anyway. We were always in, in touch and ready for any questions or anything like that. But, um, and we have our free Facebook group, but this is more of a paid membership where people get mentoring circles every month covering many different topics. This month is going to be meditation, but we've done uh, business skills, like writing a business plan, um, social media skills. We've done uh, queuing and secret, all the, all the things that you need to be working in our industry. So not just the teaching, but um, I invite other people to come in and collaborate as well, which is so exciting because I can really share the all those gifts of, that our teachers hold with other people as well. Um, so that's something that I'm focusing a bit of attention on right now and I'm going to be hopefully doing a chair dancing workshop very soon as well, um, helping people to teach uh, 
dancing on the chair so which is actually in our manual as well we have a page about chair dancing because that's a beautiful way to reach people in certain situations so uh, add a bit so, of yeah. add a bit of fun and excitement to it as well exactly yeah for sure music is so powerful and moving the body and just being happy and joyful you know that's part of my mission to help people not just be healthier but happier as well so um so yeah so that and uh yeah, that, that's what's coming up in the near future. And uh, I'm sure there will be more things, to, good things to come as, as time goes on as well. Awesome. Yeah, you can never have enough people teaching it. Um, yeah. But I really want to be there and support people more as well, which is what my idea with the community is um, and to, to help people to continue to learn and grow um, and also just be together and to feel that support because when you're a teacher, a chair yoga teacher or a yoga teacher or whatever you're often alone really because uh you go and do your classes by yourself and I mean you have beautiful people around you all the time but but as in uh from from a you don't have colleagues you don't have like work colleagues and office in an office that you can talk to and turn to for advice or just to chat or whatever so that that's what that community is really really all about is to create that space for our teachers that's right. Just have um help build on there as a relationships. Um, just yeah, uh, it's so powerful. Yeah, I think that's important in classes too. Just uh, as teachers, is to create that within the classes as well, a place where the students can have those that support system too. And I see that really happening with chair yoga, um, maybe even more than other classes I've ever taught because there's something about it that just really uh, and then having all those different people again with different experiences and life life lives uh in the class it just it brings people together so much and, and yeah the, the friendships and support systems that are formed in the classes is just really inspiring i guess because you're sitting down so you're already a bit more relaxed you're not so formal if you're standing up, up you're just like <laughs> yeah, i'm already first step i'm sitting down i'm already relaxed so it's a good that's start. true <laughs> yeah everyone i like that too because everyone's on a, the same playing field too when they're sitting whereas if like some people are standing some people are sitting uh there's a little it's not really it's a, it's like a physical uh hierarchy in a way which is not really intentional but it just kind of might feel like that for some people mm. so everyone seated is just putting everyone in the same level playing field at the beginning of the, the class and then you know just yeah it makes people feel more comfortable I think as well yeah that's right um is there anything about chair yoga I guess like a myth or anything that you wish people would know that they probably have the wrong impression about yoga or chair yoga that you I'm want too to do? young for that <laughs> <laughs> I hear that one a lot Oh, I'm too young to do chair yoga <laughs> okay. or um, yeah, again, going back to the thing that it's only for people who are, you know, um, older um, and, and like I said, there, it, it is fabulous for seniors, but, but, you know, like you can make your classes, whatever you like. And people are so surprised when they do chair yoga at how, challenging it can be if they want it to be you know if they're taking the options that that they feel like they want to do and it's uh you know I feel like that that's it and the other thing that I hear is also that when people are thinking about doing the classes or doing our training um if they have an injury or if they have a challenge they think that they can't do it so but that's exactly who it's designed for, really, because, uh, like I said, for everyone, but it, but it also we have those options for them. So if they want to learn how to teach uh, with their injured foot or whatever, this is the perfect training for them. And we're never going to turn anyone away from our classes or teaching um, due to any challenges that they might be experiencing in that moment. So that is something that I hear a lot and people don't want to come along because they think they won't be able to do all the poses, but it's not about that. So, so and they will be able to do them in their own way. That's the key. So, um, yeah, so that's another one I hear a lot um or I always see those general ones as true like yoga I'm not flexible enough I'm not good enough um yoga stresses me out <laughs> yoga <laughs> yoga scares me and yeah I've been to classes that scare me as well but if you're doing true yoga with someone who 
really uh, allows you to be yourself. It shouldn't feel like that. Yeah, it's cool. about finding the right place for you, I guess. Yeah, mm. well, hopefully that'll help help a lot of people overcome that um, step of reaching out because they um, have that self doubt or um, yeah, overcoming they what they think they can't do. So yeah, that's great. Um, and that's trying to change you know for the perception of yoga even through social media and all that because you look at it and you think you know someone came to my workshop at mind body spirit festival and they were saying they want to do my training they were in a wheelchair and um she said but i've i i looked at the hashtag chair yoga and it really scared me because i saw all these people doing all these crazy poses on the chair and i thought that was what chair yoga was about and then she did the workshop with me and she's like yeah like now i know i could do it you know so uh the even the hashtag chair yoga is full of stuff that is like i guess it's yoga as well but it's not representing the true form of what we're doing i guess which is making yep. it accessible for everyone yeah and maybe you can make another hashtag um everyone's included or something or yeah you know, hashtag to make people know that it's, um, yeah, <laughs> that's a good everyone. idea actually mm. tim <laughs> yeah start a trend <laughs> that's all right yeah, <laughs> um, definitely i guess we can, um, can probably start wrapping it up i just had um, a couple of um extra things make it to make it a little bit more human and more fun I guess not that it hasn't been um just some <laughs> wrap-up questions so I've, I've got a little list so a couple of just about what is your favorite and then I've got different things if you want to just add your bit on it um, you know so, I'm a Gemini so it's very hard for me to choose <laughs> favorites <laughs> that's right I may have two <laughs> two's fine we can deal with that um so um what is your favorite animal I'm guessing your cat I've got to say cats because looking at me right now, and if I don't say that, I'll be in trouble. <laughs> yeah, cat might get. <laughs> I love them <laughs> all. I love all be all animals, all beings. Yeah. Cool. Um, <laughs> do you have a favorite singer? Um, no, but I like singers that really um, tell a story. I like lyrics and words, so singer songwriters, that kind of thing, that tell a story. Yeah. Cool. Good answer. Um, do you have a favorite movie or actor? uh no not right. really um nothing i can think of right now when i was young i was obsessed with encino man yeah, that was a good movie <laughs> you ever watched that <laughs> Goodness. Right. um favorite sport other than yoga zumba, zumba. That, that was count? a good fad that was a good fad when it was around everyone was doing zumba I think they still yeah, do it's it now. still around it's yeah. still around <laughs> hasn't, hasn't died <laughs> not still yet going strong. not yet yeah in some places it is yeah cool um what's your favorite food um oh gosh i don't know i have so many <laughs> or, or group group of foods or something foods well um i love the panna chocolate white chocolate um vegan chocolate it's called it's white chocolate caramel white chocolate or something okay well, let's see there's a new one out called caramel too which is really nice i haven't tried that one yeah. it's <laughs> uh, like a hazelnut center but yeah white chocolate um i don't is it really sweet like a normal white chocolate it's not no because it's like it's made with coconut sugar and a few other things that aren't, aren't so sweet so i would say that but actually i can't eat that because i'm having reactions to coconut at the moment but hopefully that will pass <laughs> I would right. say that is favorite flavor. <laughs> cool. Um, and if you had a superpower, what would it be? To help everyone remember their light within, to switch it on. <laughs> yeah, because maybe. then the world will be a better place. I'll be up for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, if I've got two left. So if you were given one wish to give to someone else, who would it, who would you use it on and what would you wish for them? Oh gosh, that's a heavy question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the answer to that. I didn't even think about that one myself. I'm not sure who I'd pick. Maybe my daughter. Um, give her confidence. Yeah. I'm not sure. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I don't know because we're all one, right? So can I do a collective? <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> But again, it would be like a similar wish to what my superpower would be, just that everybody remembers really 
that no matter what's happening, that they have that light within and that unconditional love because once they remember that connection, then, um, yeah, that changes changes the way they feel about their life and, and all that sort of stuff. So that I think that would help the world immensely. Definitely. We need some more of that. Um, and yeah. last one, if you could that answer spend... the question. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was perfect. Um, and if you could spend an hour with anyone currently living or from the past, who would it be and why? My higher self. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, gosh, that's a loaded question as well. I think I'd want to spend it with Jesus, to be honest. Yeah. I'd love to just have a chat with him and um, just uh learn more from him because like he was really such a teacher wasn't he a teacher and a healer which is what I'm trying to do in my life so I think he could really help help me to 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 fulfill my mission here as well yeah definitely no that's that's wonderful I think I'd um I'd choose my no no because he was such um such an amazing person like he um, achieved so much in his life um I think I'd go back and talk to him yeah he's had such an impact yeah 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 mm. yeah hope cool. jesus doesn't be religious because i'm not religious i'm talking about the individual not the, not the creation that religion is we yeah, better definitely. not put that uh, people might no, no one's going to judge you over it <laughs> we're all in human <laughs> oh well he's a peacemaker right he was a he was a peace and i think that yeah I kept hearing that song, make me a channel of your peace. Like it's a hymn and it was making me uncomfortable because I was like, no, I don't really like the church so much, but um, because it's an institution, but but that message of that song, I guess, is what I'm trying to do really. So uh, so that's more the aspect of his teachings that I would go for. Yeah, Excellent. which were all of his teachings. But yeah. Cool. Um, Strange. <laughs> that was fantastic. Um, I guess we can... Um, can probably wrap it up now we've been um talking for quite a while um but no i really really appreciate you taking out your time to spend with us today and um yeah, letting everyone know what what you do and how you're yeah. giving back to, to other people and and how you can support them uh, and it's fantastic um but no, i um yeah, had a had a wonderful chat and i really appreciate your time today Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. It was really great to chat with you and to share the message a little bit more about true yoga and um, how it can help people. And, and um, yeah, everyone out there, don't be shy to do yoga because, but, you know, maybe source out teachers that are coming from this space where, where it's all about, um, you know, helping you, not hurting you in a way. So yeah, don't be shy to reach out for any, any, anything you need. Um, to do with yoga or any advice or anything excellent no worries mm -hmm. well um yeah thanks again claire and just um thanks for being on the show and i look forward to talking again soon yeah thanks tim you right, too thank you. have a wonderful day you too <laughs> bye <laughs>I hope you enjoyed the Scleroderma Sunshine podcast. Don't forget to please subscribe because it ensures you can keep up to date with the latest episodes. If you love Scleroderma Sunshine, please share with your family and friends so you can help spread awareness of this disease and also help brighten someone's day. Thank you again and I hope you found it valuable. Until the next episode, I'm your host, Tim Primavera. And don't forget to let your light shine bright.